Hi guys, welcome back to another Matchbox Garage video. I'm Rob, and today I shall be attempting to take this Chevrolet Impala taxi from super shabby to shiny. This one is probably the worst car that I have, and this one is going to take every little ounce of skill, uh, say skill lightly, but uh, it's going to take everything for me today to get this up uh, but anyway we'll start by drilling down the center of the posts remove the flange and tap those holes remember to lubricate your piece you don't want to snap it in the hole and my very handy vice gets a lot of use today so this is what we are playing with what an absolute state like I say I've only done one other car that's probably similar condition and that was a Pontiac um, that video being my biggest video with nearly 300,000 views so you know I can't I can't say that I'm not hoping that uh, this will do the same But uh, underneath it did read there, Matchbox Series number 20, Chevrolet Impala Taxi, made in England by Lesney. But let's uh, remove these screws to see what we're playing with. Now I've had this uh, taxi for some time and to be honest when I first received it I thought this is this is not repairable this is going to be a Mad Max or maybe Chevrolet um, like convertible custom or something like that but you know I put it to the community tab and a lot of people there said do it so with that kind of positivity I uh, kind of plucked up the courage to uh, give it a try thankfully this interior was in good condition obviously it's very shabby but with a light bit of water later on it comes up looking good as new quite a cool little uh, kind of way how this all goes together to be honest with this didn't really know where to start so I thought well it's attached on there just about on one of the four corners if I can just very gently massage out this uh, broken windshield then at least I've got you know a little start and then just trying to get my <laughs> yeah well that yeah, just yeah I, I prefer a harder job so why not just take the whole roof off eh So the uh, broken bit of glass I shall gently place to one side and now we've got the roof I really didn't want this to break off fully it's gonna make the job harder but this is what we got so uh, let's take off the paint we'll add some boiling water into my foot long hot dog jar just enough to cover the casting and we'll add the caustic soda so just a couple of teaspoons needed today 
There's not a lot of uh, real estate in there. And to be honest, half of the paint was coming off anyway. So put a little bit of this in. And I know, as you can see, it's uh, coming off straight away. Look at that. Perhaps not as quick as the Anglia that I did in my last video. That was probably five seconds. This was probably all of 30 seconds. Luckily, I wasn't in a rush, eh? So, pouring it down the drain. People ask, indeed I do pour it down the drain. I have the cleanest drains in London. So this is the casting with some oxidisation over it. But with my fake Dremel, we get that polished up. And then, just because the video would have been an hour long, I'm going to now include the kind of, I guess, fix process. In the Pontiac video, because I felt that this part was very messy and long, uh, I skipped it. Kind of skipped to the, not necessarily the end result, but just, you know, along the way, having done bits, this is where I was. Um, and a few people just mentioned, you know, it would have been nice to see how you did it. So I thought, well, okay, I'll record it, I'll put in this footage. But we can't be watching it real time because we'd be here all day and I'm sure you've got better things to do. So this is at four times speed. If you really do want to watch it in real time, you can always adjust your YouTube settings down to 25%. I think you'll get the uh, the full grasp of what I'm trying to achieve here. I use the tape. I use super glue, and I use baking powder and tweezers. Um, and then the actual little bits that I use are split pins or cotter pins, depending on where you're from. And I use those little bits of metal. So as you can see here, just bringing it back down to standard for a moment. This is the super glue that I've used on this occasion. And the baking powder from the kitchen cupboard. Don't tell my wife. She's probably been looking for it. But as you can see. Put a little bit of super glue in there and the baking powder just acts like a it, it well one it makes it dry much faster but also it gives it a bit of structure uh, it gives you some structure really to actually sand on and paint so i'm just very gingerly placing in the window section there just to make sure that everything is kind of straight and fits and you know this is not going to be perfect um, I'd love it to be perfect but you know this whole thing was apart and it's all bent so uh, if I can get it 90% I'd be happy So now with that rear end kind of uh, super glued in, we're going to use the masking tape into the front of the car. And again, just because I'm so lucky, there are on each side kind of like uh, two, I don't think they're called, both of them are A pillars, but I guess one's an A pillar and one's a B pillar. So I've got four of these to try and kind of uh, uh, replicate. And 
and again we're at four times speed only because there's about I think it was about half an hour's worth of footage just trying to get these tiny little pin size pieces into position in the correct position but also then glued and powdered Normally my videos I take one to two days to do. Uh, this one's been a, a four day project. So yeah, quite a long one. Which means there's you know a lot more footage. Results in a longer video. But it then just means that everything else is longer. The editing process, the voiceover process, or the upload, etc. But I've got the casting next to me right now. And it's worth it. You'll notice that I drop the cast in a couple of times and every time you do it, you know, your your heart breaks because you think, you know, you put in these hours of gluing and rubbing it down and so on just for you to drop it and then for the whole thing to come apart. After the first lot of primer, I was rubbing it down and I did manage to pull apart on one of the corners I could have cried but I kept my call and I uh, just continued with the job as if it never happened an extra bit of glue an extra bit of so baking soda a bit of a rub down and go again Do need to find myself uh, a new glue. These little glues, I got three of them at the pound shop, and the glue is super. It, really, you know, pardon pun, the super glue really is super. But every time you use it, you put the lid back on, and the lid just glues itself shut. So it's. Um, I don't know. I need a. I need a, a glue that not only is good, but actually allows me to open up the lid every time. So here we are. I guess kind of what we could say phase one of the rebuild process. You know, it's back into one piece, albeit bulging on each corner with the super glue so of course it's all going to be rubbed down and reapplied and rubbed down and reapplied again and same with a primer I think I primed it three times rubbed down in between you know a little bit of fettling in between here and there just to try and make it as good as possible but we're going to go over it now with all my uh, uh, wife's uh, nail files and a couple of these pin files as well or needle files and then after that using my Humbrol model filler going over all the sections again again just to try and make it as smooth as possible So having now gone over it again, smoothed it all out, 
and happy with that. I'm going to hit it up with its first layer of primer. And I shall be using the Tamiya Fine Surface Primer in white. And I kind of lay this on generously to be honest with no real care or consideration because I'll be rubbing this all the way back down again. I kind of wanted to get it into one uniform uh, colour so I could start to chase down all the imperfections. It looks good already, but it does need some further work, especially on those uh, those front A pillars. So it's all been rubbed down, and I've kind of had a bit of work on those A pillars, getting them look a bit more well factory, I guess. And then this time, I'm much happier with that result. To be honest, I was rubbing it down in the between these stages for probably four hours, and eventually I had to just accept kind of where I was at. Otherwise, I would have been there for hour after hour after hour trying to chase perfection when. I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure whether it was possible. Like I say, if I can get it to 90%, I'd be happy. This was a uh, Bayejo paint. With the yellow, I put a kind of little couple of drops of red, and then I had to bring it down a little bit with an extra bit of white. But looking at the pictures, this yellow is spot on. So that was just one coat. Um, I did end up putting three coats on, and this is now in a kind of matte finish. So I'll be adding the taxi decal right there and it is coming along nicely so I use the clear X22 and I always use a shot glass and syringe to carefully measure out my paints and thinner and then I'll go with a 2 to 1 ratio as simple as that give it a stir and we're ready to go so another one that I've just sped up a little bit this stuff you can be quite aggressive with you know I put it on a setting that meant that it was coming out quite lightly and it'll almost be drying, you know, on on touch. But you want to get it wet. I found that if I do a little bit at a time, leave it to dry, put it back, leave it to dry, it just never gets the real luster of shine that I'm looking for. I have to kind of keep on layering it up, layer it up, get it wet, and that's when you're going to get it nice and shiny. So whilst that's drying, Uh, got this uh, looking pretty good I think you'll agree and then I'm gonna put a little black wash on the wheels and this is Citadel non oil 
one of my favourite things in my arsenal here. And you can see the difference between the kind of old and new. And of course this old windscreen is not salvageable. Um, and I buy my windscreens and plus that decal from modelsupplies.co.uk but I always still find that the windscreen still needs the pledge treatment. And we'll pop the couple of plastic bits here into some warm water. And I shall turn off my compressor. And look at him. He looks good as new. And the little plastic bit there. If only my camera will focus, there you go. Looking good, looking good. We know about the base. And then what I'm going to do is grab my silver paint pen and go over the axle ends on the wheels. And I'm sure you are dying to see the finished article, but I'm just going to keep you waiting. And I'm going to put it together now off screen. But this is a little reminder of what she looked like. And here she is. This is the result. So I've probably put in maybe up towards 15 hours into this car. Would you believe it? Like I say, it is not perfect, but I think it's pretty good, and I hope you guys like it. But anyway, I want to take this opportunity to thank my patrons. And thank you very much for watching. Hopefully, you'll stick around for the next one.